Hi, right, the, um, I've completed the lofting out, which I'll show you now. Um, all the panels are drawn out on the sheet. Um, and I'll also go through what else I've done to the sheet as well. So I'm going to have to do this by hand, so bear with me a sec. Right, okay. Um, probably won't be able to see the actual... No, I'm not going to see it that well. The actual drawings, but what you can see is a, is a series of screws that I've put in. These panels are sewn together with wire, yeah, or cable ties, whatever takes your fancy. Um, so I'm just about to cut it out. So I need it to stay secure because I've actually got, like I said before, two panels. Yeah. So I want the panel underneath. I'm going to cut both panels out at the same time. So I want the underneath one to be secure so there's no movement. This is going to be my straight edge, this edge here. So I'll be working from this edge again. So this will be the centre of my boat. And these are the two... Um, this joins the boat in the middle, if you like. But, um, it, that'll come more obvious once I've cut all the panels out. Um, I haven't screwed the screws all the way flush because there's just no need. I can salvage these screws again and reuse them further along the build. It's just to keep the, the panels together, you know. Um, and I screwed them in just off the, the outside line edge of each panel and um, reason being that's where the wire would go through and connect to the following panel if you like which we'll see as we go along but yeah unfortunately using the pencil you can't exactly see all of the let's see right this is the um the bow or, you know the bow and stern basically because it's going to be duplicates of this and there's a 50 mil grid that I use, and it helps me get the curve on some of the panels. Okay, I also use a little, um, a little stencil. It's called a French curve. I think I'll show you it. One of those. So that just helps me because I freehand draw that curve in. Um, it's basically. Because I've been doing it for so long, I kind of know the shape that I want the front and the rear of the, you know, the whole, the bow and stern, I know the shape that I like and uh, I'm trying to keep it that traditional kind of look. So yeah, this is uh, this is a little bit boring, you can't exactly see the lines, but I will be photographs and in more detail. Okay, also for cutting, so, uh, um, yeah. for the... The long distance cuts, if you like, um, I'm going to be using a panel saw, a hand panel saw. Um, I just find it's, you get more of an accurate cut, <coughs> you've got more control, and it can't run away with you, if you like. Um, for the curves and some parts, I will use a hand jigsaw, uh, like an electric jigsaw, yeah. Um, I mean, the jigsaw that I've got is a, it's a very expensive jigsaw, uh, as I was come to by trade, you know, it's over £300 worth of hand jigsaw. Uh, they're a great tool, but even with all the experience that I've had using it and doing it dead slow and all the rest of it, to keep that bang on straight line, um, it takes some doing. I mean, you've only got to be distracted slightly and you're off. And once all the panels are actually cut out, it, it's it will just increase the, the work that you've got to do. You've got to do a lot of mucking around afterwards because all the Basically, once all the panels are cut, which you'll see later on, they're all clamped together, all the identical panels. And then you've got to make sure all the edges are identical because it's basically like a jigsaw. It's not going to fit, you know, if they're not how they, you know, if they're not flush. And if one panel's bigger than the other, then it's going to put the uh, the look and the shape of the boat off. Um, I'm not saying it's zero tolerance. You know, but yeah, you've got to keep it within a you know within a couple of mil tops at, at, at the latter end, if you like. You know, 
Um, you don't want to be two mil out at the beginning of the panel. Trying to get to the end, you want to be like 10 mil out. It's just going to be a poor show. Um, so if you can, just use the panel saw. Take it nice and easy. Let the saw do the cutting. You know, the thing with panel saws and you know hand saws and that. People are giving it all that, giving it all the muscle, and that's when things start going pear shaped. It's a saw, it's got a saw edge, the saw will cut it, you've just got to slide it backwards and forwards. Take your time, you know, it's only 12 mil you've got to cut through, it's, it's not it's not going to break your back, you know. But yeah, when it comes to curves, you know, I'm, you know, I'm quite handy with the jigsaw when you get a nice sweep, you know, and uh, yeah, jobs are good. So, um, right, I'm going to start cutting it out now, it's going to take me a little while. Um, also, I will say, because I did notice on that, um, that was a set of plans that I had, and a couple of the measurements on there were slightly out, only about 5 mil. Um, so if you do, even though they're decent plans, um, if you do get them, and when you're doing this lofting out, and you're doing your measurements, before you start cutting anything, it's going to take a little bit of time, but go all over those measurements again ticking them off on your plans to make sure you've got the exact correct measurement on that station line okay um, and you can normally pick it up as you're using your um, your flexible sort of straight edge if you like for marking in the panels because a lot of them swoop you know they're not dead straight um, you'll pick it up you'll think well oh, that's, that's a bit strange you know you've got a nice sort of curve coming down and all of a sudden it'll shoot up and no alarm bells are going you'll think no no it can't be right because you know and then refer back and you'll probably find out you've just you know mislaid it a little bit i mean i'll dig those out again right. um i mean this is what you're going to get plans and I mean it's just a mass of lines and figures so it's a bit daunting if someone's never worked from plans before or you know, if no one's even done a little model kit you know when they were youngster and the rest of it or, or people might still be into all that you know. shouldn't have said that really but yeah I know some people my age that still make their own models and working from that kind of you know that sort of instructions if you're not used to it just take your time you know it's a nice little project and yeah I'm sure you'll whoever has to go you'll get the hang of it and all the rest of it right I'm going to stop waffling because I need to try and get this cut before the wife comes home because uh, I shouldn't be doing it in the house <laughs> but the weather's terrible out there so I can't do it outside and I need to get this cut for tomorrow because I'm off to the workshop so soon a bit Hi guys, Joe from Canoe Bushcraft again. Right, I'm at the workshop. Um, you've seen from the other video, I did the lofting out and cut the panels out. I'm now at the workshop. What you can see here is, with all the four panels cut out, I'm actually crouched down at the moment, so that's one of the panels. And what I've done, I've screwed all four together. So you've got a complete set. And then clamped them to a bench of some sorts and then I've planed all of the, the edges all the way around and slightly sanded it so they're all even and I'll pick the camera up and show you because this is what happens with the first two sheets which I showed you they're clamped together and cut so the two inner sheets here you can see are quite flush they're fine the two outer sheet um, panels are cut from a separate sheet so you're going to get overlapping and this is what I'm planing down to get this all dead smooth like so and you do that with all your panels ok so this is the stage I'm at at the moment ok um, all I'm using for getting these edges down is this um, small hand plane. Okay, 
Um, bigger planes, um, as you can see from this panel, it's, it's, it's curved, it's not straight. And from a lot of the panels, there are um, sweeps and stuff. And if you use a larger plane, then um, you've got a tendency to straighten everything out and you don't want to do that. That's got a, a small surface and I normally use it as an angle. But you've got to be gentle and you don't want to split out the side of the, the ply. Um, just drilled a small hole and just staggered the screws. Um, I'm not worried about these holes because this is where they're going to be sewn. So every four inches I'm going to have a hole in the way for the wire or cable tie to go through. So um, I'm going to crack on with this last set. I mean you can see how far out they can go. You know, when you do that last sheet. So um, I, I have purposely gone a bit pear shaped on this. Just so you can actually, you know. This is what happens if you don't take a lot of care. Um, I would avoid using an electric plane because you can end up taking off too much and then it will mess up the panel. This bit here is um, actually the where the gunnels are going to be resting on, if you like. Uh, my other panels are here, they're all done, ready for the next stage. So I should just finish these off. And I'll be ready for this. Putting the pilot holes in and getting ready to join these panels together. So there's four panels here. This is bow and stern, half of the canoe. So these will be joined here to be a butt joint to make the full. That's an eight foot length there. And it, the other section of this. The duplicate will come out from this side and it will be butt strapped in the middle. Um, it will be clamped with two pieces of wire and then a small piece of tape either side, fiberglass tape. Then that will be left to cure. And um, whilst that's curing, I shall be preparing this piece of ash. And making it into the gunnels and the torques and so on whilst that's curing. Okay, brilliant.